that NBA experience. Talk about how maybe you can help Jamal with that and uh, maybe even the players as well. Well, I think we come with a lot of experience from a playing background as well as a coaching background. Uh, I think we have a place, a style of play that we would like to play and I understand what he wants to get done. So just having that background and knowing the way he wants to play, I think it's going to be helpful. Hopefully it'll be good for our guys as well. Has it been easy to implement that style or have there been some maybe growing pains? Anytime you put in something new with a group of guys, it's always going to be growing pains. Our guys have been very receptive, they're very open, and uh, we've done a good job of helping them get through the things we need to get to, and it's still a local project. What about the transition for you coming here to Ann Arbor? I mean, a whole different atmosphere for you. How, how are you fitting? It's been great. You know, back home, I live here from Detroit, so being back here is been great. It's been a home coming for me. What went into your decision to, to come here? I'm sorry to hear you. What, what went into your decision to come here? When was it? What, what went into your decision to come here? Well, I thought it was a great opportunity to, you know, continue to serve, to help others, help young people. And to be honest with you, uh, to impact uh, young players' lives. Where I was at in the NBA, we all see that the game is getting younger. So to be able to come back and, and impact them before they actually get into the business of basketball, I think is very important. How well did you know Juwan before you came here? I mean, how did you interact? Uh, I've been knowing Juwan since I was 17. So we've been knowing each other a very long time. So this is an easy transition for us. We've talked and remained friends all these years. So the transition, us working together, me working for him, has been very easy to see this almost. How have you seen him react since he's gotten this job? How have you seen him embrace? You know, he's, he's expressed his love for Michigan and all that, but how have you seen him react to becoming this head coach? He's loving it, you know, the opportunity to come back and work and serve the university that you attended. Uh, this place means a very lot to, uh, to him. He really feels strongly about how it prepared him to be a man, uh, impact of his career. So to have the opportunity to come back and help others, I think is very important. You know, why he's so passionate about it. Talk about wanting to impact players' lives. How has that transition been like for you in terms of forging those relationships? Is it different than the NBA? It's, it's been great. You know, the NBA is so volatile. It's just the nature of the business. You never know how long you can have guys. This short period of time, just um, the information that I have, you know, they've been very receptive to it. Hopefully, you know, this is just still very early in the process, but you never know how long it will but you have an opportunity to work with guys for years. So, you know, that's something I'm looking forward to. You know, it's just the first group, so it's ongoing, still, you know, learning each other, but it's, it's been awesome. How does that change your approach in terms of helping them develop and helping them grow? You know, which helps tremendously is that I've set in their shoes. So, you know, being able to, relate to what they're going through both from an academic standpoint, from a playing standpoint, uh, I think it's very vital. And I think that's something that they, you know, take very seriously and they, they appreciate, you know, having someone that has been through what they're going through. When you talk about Xavier as a leader and then other leadership potential you see beyond him? I can't talk enough or say enough good things about that group. We've got a fantastic group. Uh, Xavier's probably one of the best leaders I've ever been around. I've been around some good ones. Just his passion and uh, his work ethic, you know, holding people accountable. And the way guys have been receptive to that, and they all rally for one another. The way upperclassmen have embraced our freshmen uh, has been tremendous. Uh, our guys have just been great. I couldn't think of a better group of guys that we could have than the ones we have right now. Are there any others beyond him that have been vocal uh, that you see potential in, in that Isaiah way? Isaiah has really stepped up in uh, you know, being one of the few guys that uh, you know played minutes you know in the past. Uh, you know, John is a little on the milder side, you know, try to lead by his play. Not a very vocal guy, but he's still very passionate as well. What have you seen from David DeJulius in his progression since you've been here? Obviously, he's been here for a year, but you know, since you've gotten here, have you seen him kind of 
you know, take any any steps like some really uh, I think David's gonna have a great year for us. I think he's gonna embrace and really look forward to playing in a open style. Uh, you look at Dave as a freshman, didn't really get a lot of opportunity to play last year. So we understand there's a lot of teaching and growing pains so that's gonna he's gonna have to go through as well. But uh, he's been very good, he's an unbelievable worker and wants to learn and wants to get better. What have you learned from Phil Martelli so far and how valuable is it having someone with so much experience on the staff? Man, you know, he's coaching everybody. So he's coaching me, he's coaching Juwan, he's he's coaching our staff just to have someone that knows the game and been around the game and understands people. He's very passionate. You know, he's a teacher at heart. So to have people like that to be around them where you can absorb so much knowledge from him has just been wonderful. Talks about Juwan's transition to the college game and mainly the recruiting kind of the time demands and everything else that comes with it. You're doing the same exact thing. Like, do you, how much have you guys talked to each other about you know working through I guess all these adjustments and just everything that comes with it? We're working through it. I think there's a, a, a misunderstanding or a perception that those guys at the next level or let's say NBA level don't work. You know, those guys work just as many hours. Uh, you don't see it a lot. You don't see how much time they really put in. So working is in our DNA. Uh, that's first and foremost. It's different than where we come from as far as the recruiting piece. But you know, we embrace it. Uh, it's been good. It's, it's been a great experience. So we can just continue to grow and learn and do the best we can in that aspect. You mentioned Dave as a as a high schooler. He was a ball dominant guy. I've been kind of watching his progression, playing without the ball, distributing to others. What have you noticed in that regard in your initial working with him here in practice? Man, all our guys have been great embracing something different. And what we're doing is a lot different from what they've done in the past. So they embrace it. It's a new way of playing. So it's, it's going to be growing pains with that, but they are all trying to make the adjustments, all trying to, to work and understand what we're trying to do as a, as a team and what Coach Howard wants to put in. And I, I think he's been one of the few that has really benefited from a, a different style of play. And I think it's really helped him to open his game up and have the freedom to play. So in what way you said it's helped him? How has it kind of describe how you've seen it allow him to? Well, he, he's very good with the basketball. So to have the opportunity to play more downhill, I think it's been really beneficial for him to have him play in space. I think will help him tremendously. Uh, and just being able to, to to play and not play more thinking and just play free. And I think that's probably was one of the things that, you know, was hindering him a little bit last year. He had to, it's a new system again, so he's going through it again to have to put it in a system and you think about the different terminology and the different cuts. You know, for a young man that's coming from a situation like you described, it can be a little challenging at times. Mm -hmm. You anticipate, and I'm not asking you to wait trade secrets, but anticipate you know, him and X being on the field, or Xavier being on the court a lot together this year? I mean, it's hard to say right now. You know, they both have very good ball qualities. And, you know, you have guys that you can put on the floor that can break the defense down is always helpful to, for everyone else out there. What do you remember about your first interaction with Xavier? Yeah, uh, it was good. You know, he's, he came right up and introduced himself and immediately asked, you know, things that could help him, you know, get better, things he needed to work on. Was there any, I mean, he's obviously heard lots of stories about him in practice and things he says and does. Was there any surprise from you in terms of how intense he was or, or anything like that? No, not really. You know, when you're around this game as much as I have, you can sort of see it all. Uh, his passion is there, and, and you, you want him to play with that. 
this desire to want to win every game, every drill. You know, you want him to stay like that. He's definitely driven a level of competition up at our practices. And again, he's able to hold guys accountable and they are receptive to that, as well as when they get on him. So it's been a great atmosphere. It's been very tough practices. And uh, we got a lot out of him. So what did you tell him? And he said, tell me what he do to get better. What did you say? And have you seen him grow in those areas? I mean, it's been a short period of time. I do see him working on them. And again, this, this is new, you know, him playing in a different style from what he might have played with last year. But he's definitely working on it, and we really want him to continue to do the things he does well and to play with, you know, to his strengths. That's what's going to help make us successful. You've heard quite a bit about positionless basketball. Coming from the NBA and seeing so much talent, what are your thoughts on the pros and cons of that kind of style? Well, you have to trust. You know, in your system, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you're allowing guys who maybe don't normally handle the ball as much, you're allowing them to be able to handle the ball more than, say, maybe just your point guard or your secondary ball handler. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's the way we want to play. Uh, we think it's harder to guard uh, instead of just saying you go here, you play here. Uh, we think it speeds up the pace of the game, which we like. Maybe hopefully put some guys in positions that they haven't been in. Has that been a big emphasis so far? Speed, maybe pushing the ball on the fast break and uh, letting it happen naturally. I, I think it's going to be good for us to play in space mm -hmm. and to create early opportunities. Uh, so that has been an emphasis, emphasis is to play with, with pace. Mm -hmm. Last time you were in the college game, uh, your senior year, you guys won that lead eight run. What was there any sort of nostalgia coming back and a different vibe from the NBA? Anything like that? Uh, It's different. It's almost like I'm going back to college. I mean, <laughs> being here in this environment, you know, talking about school. And, uh, you know, I took a test <laughs> for the first time in 30 years, so I had to pass the test. So, you know, I'm embracing, you know, being back in college almost. So it's good. It's really good. What did you think when you saw that room book for the first time? It got oh a little bigger. Oh, my goodness. Jeez. Um, <laughs> challenging. <laughs> it was challenging. It was good. It was good. I mean, but but like on that topic, you know, going from the NBA to college and college, like every single thing you have to double check. You're allowed to do so you can do that. I mean, just what has that process been like of retraining? I guess your brain a little bit. Um, it's part of it. You know, mm -hmm. I understood that when I came in that you know you have to go by the rules, and there are a lot of rules. So you know, I'm not gonna complain about it. You have to know the rule book, you have to know the do's and don'ts. And that's just part of it. I mean, there's no way of getting around that. You embrace it, you understand that's what it is, and go do the best you can. Howard, you, you're working with the guards. Who, who is that on this roster? In practice and in those drills, which players does that include? All of our players. All right. All of them. You know, <laughs> we, you know, we teach very similar skills to all the positions. Um, talk about, you know, again, positionless basketball, right. so they all have to have, you know, similar skill sets. Mm -hmm. and, you know, the great thing about us is that we see the things from different angles. Um, so I think that helps us, and, and we all, we coach. You know, that's what we do. And I think our staff was put together in a way that we all coach, and I'm not just coaching this guy, we're coaching everyone. I think it's just been very helpful in this work. It's worked well for us. And then some totally different you you know you played with and against Juwan in the NBA. He was someone who wasn't afraid to mix it up, you know, hard fouls at times, things like that. Is that evident in his coaching style as well? You know, getting guys to embrace physical contact. Yes, I mean he's had tremendous success at every level, uh, being who he is and playing the way he's played in a certain style of basketball. It would be crazy for him to come here and to try to differ from what made him so good as a player, but where he's won championships you know, at the professional level as well. So you know, he has an understanding of what's been well and the things he needs to teach to help his group to make the next step. Uh, that's to win a championship.
Howard, Juwan emphasized the word trust a lot today. How, do, how has he won your trust, and how do you see him winning the trust of other people? I see that happening by him being just who he is. Uh, he's a very sincere guy. He's very loyal. Uh, you can ask anyone that's been around him for any period of time. Uh, and his work ethic. You know, he goes out every day in the same demeanor wants and requires that everyone put in a, a good promise their work and his reputation on uh, the game of the teams he's been around. He's been successful at every level. So I think that in itself requires a certain amount of trust from the players. I see he walks the rock. And he has, he's done it. Yeah. What do you remember about, uh, what was your first reaction, I guess, when he called you and presented you with this possible opportunity? Um, you know, it's funny, we've had conversations about college well before he got the job. And um, he's always said that if uh, there's only one job that he would be interested in, and it came about, it was Michigan. And uh, he just asked me if I would come with him. And it's really that simple, that easy. Uh, again, we have a great relationship. Yeah, we go all the way back to when we were 17 years old. So we've been friends, we communicate regularly, even just saying hello. So throughout the years, it's, uh, it was an easy decision for me. What was the first time you met? <laughs> uh, what was it, 11th grade? And it was uh, AAU tournament. Uh, we played. Got into a team fight, actually. Um, <laughs> and uh, we played on the Olympic Festival team the following summer. So that was probably the first few times we met, a couple times. Who won the fight? You have to ask him. <laughs> <laughs> when did that relationship, I guess, become? When did you say you guys were friends and communicate a lot? I mean, it's a small world. Um, just how our lives have been intertwined. Um, he went to, obviously, Jalen went, went here. I played high school basketball with Jalen. So, and our coach, Perry Watson, was his coach here. So, our lives have always been intertwined. Uh, we played together in Dallas. So, we've always been close. Uh, I mean, I, I don't even know how it's always been that way, but it just has been. You know, we've always got along. It was seamless. It was very easy. It wasn't like anything forced. And we just always stayed in contact and communicated. Now at Southwestern, you and Rashawn Leonard and Jalen, what, what, how were your class-wise? How did you line up together? Which classes were you guys in? I was a year older than me. Okay. Uh, so they, when I was a senior, they were juniors. Okay. Yeah, so they were actually the same year as juniors. Okay. Yeah. What was John's role in that fight? He, uh, I won't say he started it, but he participated. <laughs> Does anybody on this roster remind you of anyone that you've played with in the NBA or maybe coached with Westchester or other NBA stuff? Um, X, uh, I'm not saying he's the caliber player as a Chris Paul, but mm -hmm. their leadership styles uh, are very similar. Mm -hmm. uh, the way they lead, and the way they compete, it was very similar in that, in that way. What do you remember about uh, 2000, 2001, you guys were uh, together, right? Um, at that time, it probably felt a little bit like this year with, man, our, crawl, our pads have crossed and here we are right. again on the same NBA team. But right. at that point, you're both in the middle of your careers. Um, what was it like to be on the NBA team with a guy that you've known since you were like, no? Uh, I mean, sort of just happened, you know. I, I feel the same way with Jalen and Deshaun. Like, we played high school basketball together, and, and our, uh, we never played together, but to see guys, and at that time, there was a lot of guys coming out of the city that we were very familiar with. Uh, I won't say took it for granted, but it was sort of the, the norm almost, if that makes any sense. Not normal for everybody. So. No, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't want to take it for granted, but, you know, our circle was sure. just, it was, I wouldn't say normal, but it was, yeah, I didn't think like, wow, because, you know, it's, 
there's three guys that you've had relationships with, again, since you were like 17 years old. Sure. In terms of being able to piece together and being creative as, as long as yours, or John going 18 years or whatever his was, what, what, what do you think you guys had in common, maybe personality-wise, that enabled you to be able to stay in the league that long when maybe, you know, the town wasn't quite what it was when you were younger and stuff like that? Uh, I think the understanding of the game, mm -hmm. uh, understanding of uh, that it was a job, and how much work you have to put into your craft, and just exactly what it meant to be a professional and to help others, uh, but to stay in shape and really your understanding of the game, uh, and being a good teammate. You know, those things, you know, really go a long way, especially as you get older. Uh, you know, I, I had great role models and coming from where I come. I say all the time, if it wasn't uh, Jerry Sloan, John Stockton, Carl Malone, Joe Pornis, like those kind of guys really showing me the way, how to work, how to stay in the league. Uh, I may not have had the longevity that I did. How much do these guys know about what you do in your career? I mean, Juwan, you know, he's got the Fat Five documentary, he's got all this other stuff to kind of remind people. What, do you have to tell some of these guys, like, no, no, listen to me. I, uh, you know, in this age, you know, everybody Googles, so uh, they probably Google me, I'm assuming, I hope, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I try to st stay away from talking about, you know, what I did as a player uh, and just try to teach and help them uh, have an understanding. I think they do know where I came from, my background, uh, my history. I think it's definitely helped foolish to think that it did or that they would be as receptive as they have. They, they didn't think I had any knowledge of what I'm talking about. I'm just curious, what does your day-to-day -day role look like on the staff? Like, which position group do you work with? What do you do during practice? We coach. Uh, we coach. We teach. Um, again, that's one of the beauties of our staff is that we all embrace coaching. Uh, we don't try to put guys in certain situations or you got to be when it can coach from this guy. We, we all take on the responsibility of coaching our team. Uh, I think it's been helpful. I think we all enjoy it. I think guys here in different perspectives from others, I think it's also has helped them as well. Yeah, but is there a certain group that you work with? I know Saudi mentioned you work with the bigs, John works with the sorry, Saudi works with the wings, John works with the bigs. Do you work with any group? Do you coach I, offense, defense? I just coach. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Yep.